Today we're going to talk about how to use scatter plots to write and predict using equations. Here's the four basic steps we're going to use. One, create a scatter plot of the data. Two, sketch the line that most closely appears to follow the trend given by the data points. There should be about as many points above the line as below it. Step three, choose two points on the line and estimate the coordinates of each point. These points do not have to be original data points. Step four, write an equation line that passes through the two points from step three. The equation is a model for the data. So we're going to do a series of two examples. The first example we're going to talk about is for a smoothie company or business. It says, the table shows the amount of fruit used to make a smoothie in ounces and the total cost in dollars of the smoothie. Does the data show a linear relationship? If so, write an equation of a line of fits, also known as a line of best fits or a line of regression. And use it to estimate the total cost a smoothie that, of a smoothie that is made using 8 ounces of fruit. Okay, so if you look, we have this table over here. A dollar is a dollar fifty, or excuse me, one ounce is a dollar fifty, two ounces is two ten. Looks like three ounces is dollar seventy five, four ounces is three oh five, six ounces is four dollars, seven ounces is four forty five. So it looks like it is increasing as the ounces increase, so does the cost. So it is probably a linear relationship. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph this data. Notice I've just carried forward the data table and we have a coordinate plane. Now we are only going to need quadrant run of one of the coordinate plane because we won't have any negative values. The first step you're going to do is label your x and y axis as as I've done so. Smoothies and ounces. You could put smoothie ounces. Or you could use OZ for ounces. And then total cost in dollars. You always want to label your X and Y axis. Then we need to decide what to go by. It looks like I start at 1 and go all the way to 10. And my costs range anywhere from $1.50 all the way to $5.95. So I kind of broke up my data. The idea is you want to try to spread it out as much as possible. So the graph is bigger and easier to read. So I want every other box for ones across the bottom. And since I didn't have a whole lot of graph going up my y-axis, I just want every other line as $1, thus giving me 50 cent intervals. Once I completed that, you then plot the points. Two, is two dollars and ten cents, one is a dollar fifty, and so on. Plotting each of these values on the graph, which I have done for you here. Remember at any time you can stop the video and write down this information. After we have plotted the points, we're going to draw in a line of best fits. Now remember the key is you want about as many points above the line as below the line. So if you look, I tried to fit a line in. Um, I tried to go through several points and I have two points kind of really above the line and I have approximately two points below the line as well. You really want it to fit with the data. Since the slope is increasing of the points, you so want your line to increase as so. Once you have done that, you're going to pick two points on the line. Now I picked 9 at 535, because that was one of the, excuse me, yes, 9 at 535, sorry my arrow is a little off, it should go right here. And then I picked something that actually wasn't readable, um, just to show you that you can pick any point. So I picked at 2.5, it's about $2.00. Once you've done that, then you go about calculating the equation of your line. Remember, in order to calculate the equation of line, you first have to calculate your slope using the slope formula. 
So I took 535 minus 2, because those are my y values, over 9.5 minus 2.5, which gave me approximately 49 cents. Because this is talking about your slope, and your slope is the amount of money per ounce. So it's about 49 cents per ounce. Then I took the rate of 49 cents per ounce, and I picked one of those two points I used. I plugged it into my point slope formula. y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. Once I have done that, I distribute it. And after I distributed, I added the 2 over, thus giving me the equation 0.49x plus 77 cents. Now there was a one other question. It said, if so, write an equation in the line, which we did, and use it to estimate the total cost of a smoothie that is made using 8 ounces of fruit. Well, x is my ounces, so all we have to do is take our equation and plug in 8, where we see ounces. So I took 49 cents times 8 plus an additional 77 cents, yielding me a cost of a smoothie of approximately $4.69. Now, if you look at our gra uh, graph at 8, if we go up, basically it says it should be a little more than $4.50, which it was. It was $4 and almost 70 cents. I hope this has been helpful. Let's try one more. The other one is not in any way related to this one. The second example that you're going to try is an example comparing a, the humerus uh, it, length and height of a female. So we're looking for a relationship between the two. So they measured a bunch of humeruses and they measured the height. Once again, the question is, does the data show a linear relationship? If so, write an equation of the line of fit and use it to estimate the height of a female whose humerus is 40 centimeters long. So we'll do that first. I started by creating my graph. Now I noticed on this one my data doesn't really start until 22 for my x value. And my height really doesn't start until about 130. So if you remember back to when you first learned how to graph, one thing we can do is put little breaks in the graph. Now some people use a zigzag or uh, some people will put a little wave in it. Um, I put zigzags in them. Now, you do not have to break both axes. You can just break one, and that's fine. And remember, whatever you go by on the x's is not what you have to go by on the y's. Well, by putting a break in graph, I was able to start at approximately 20, since my values started at 22. And then I just decided to go by one, skipping other, every other line, and I went all the way to 34, so I could extend this line as far as I would want to. Then on my y-axis, I said, oh, lowest is 130, so we'll start there. So then I started counting, and I noticed that I could go four lines and then repeat every ten units. It will really stretch out your graph. If you only go one unit, your graph is going to be so small, you may not be able to read the points in order to figure out a line of best fit. So really spread your data out. Next, after I did that, I plotted all the values. Once again, it does show a correlation. That's what it's called when the points all show a relationship together. It's actually a pretty strong correlation. In mathematics, we would say this would almost have a one correlation, which means that they are so close together, they almost form a line. So after I did that, I noticed that the line would go somewhere in between these values, so I placed a line of best fits. Now if you notice, our graph doesn't hit over here at the y-intercept anywhere where we can see it. So you can't just predict values, you have to use points in order to find your line. I picked two points on the line. This time I picked actually two, you could read 22, 130. 
and 27, 145. You never want to pick two points that are right next to each other. You kind of want to spread it out over the line. After I did that, we need to find your slope because we're going to write an equation. So we do y minus y over x minus x. Now the nice thing about this one when I did that was the following. If I take 145 minus 130 and put it over 27 over 22, I actually end up with 15 over 5, which is just 3. What does that 3 represent? As a unit rate, it represents the height of a person related to their humerus. So every three inches of, um, excuse me, three centimeters of height of a person is equal to one centimeter of the humerus. So then I plugged it into my point slope formula. I used that smaller of the two values. So y minus 130 equals three times the quantity x minus 22. I then distributed. After distributing, I found my equation. y equals 3x plus 64. And notice we can't see the 64 anywhere down here because there are breaks in a graph. Now the other question asked, if it is, and if you can not write equation, how tall would the approximate height of a person who's 40 centimeters long humerus? Sorry, with a 40 centimeters long humerus. So all we do is plug in 40, where we see x, so we do 3 times 40 plus 64, and that yields us an answer of 184 centimeters tall. I hope this has been helpful. I apologize for any mistakes I made along the way in my speaking, but it's better to hear from me than somebody else. So make sure that you're prepared for next class period and you have everything done and are prepared for your tests. Good luck, and I will see you soon. This is Ms. Doran signing out.